Port Castille Ace is one of the most beloved characters in the series, and his execution at Marineford was the catalyst that brought together some of the best names and most powerful characters to one place, becoming the biggest war seen to date where Ace eventually lost his life protecting his brother. But what would have happened if Ace survived the Marineford War? How would the events influenced by his death in the main storyline be different had he continued in his pirate career, with the truth out in the open that he is the son of the late pirate king Goldie Roger? How high would his bounty have been, with the entire sea vying for the glory of taking his head? And how strong would Luffy be currently, considering that Ace's death was the biggest reason that led to Luffy training and becoming stronger? Keep watching, because in this video, we're going to discuss how Ace surviving the Marineford War would change the series, and how this impacts a number of key characters such as Luffy, Sabo, Yamato, the Whitebeard Pirates, the Straw Hats, and potentially many more. So let's say Ace doesn't get provoked by Akainu's comments about okay. Whitebeard and that he and Luffy escape along with the rest of the Whitebeard Pirates. Whitebeard will still eventually die at the hands of the Blackbeard Pirates, but this time Ace is there to witness his proud father's back protect him from death. With Ace surviving his execution, the Marines would definitely immediately significantly increase his bounty given his lineage. I believe Ace's bounty would increase from 550 million to at least 1 billion berry, giving him a bounty amount which at that point had never been seen before and making him the first character we see with a billion berry bounty in the series. The most obvious impact of Ace surviving the war will be how Luffy develops as a character. Firstly, Luffy wouldn't have gone into a catatonic state after seeing Ace die right in front of him. This means that he wouldn't need to be dragged away from the battlefield by Jinbei, saving both Luffy and Jinbei some extra damage from Akainu. This will in turn mean that Luffy will not have that big X burn mark on his chest. And with seeing Ace's death being his biggest motivation to get stronger, this could also have an impact on Luffy's current strength. However, Luffy does still have another huge reason to train, and that is the fear of losing his crew for good. So I believe Rayleigh will still train Luffy to prepare him for the new world. But the question now is, is the realization that he and his crew are not strong enough to take on the opponents that await them in the new world enough motivation without experiencing the pain of Ace's death and a desperation to get stronger so that he won't have to see anyone die again. Ace being alive also means that Luffy does not go into a coma and Jinbei never had to save Luffy from his self-pity or hurting himself by telling him to think of the people he still cares about, which is what made Luffy realize that he hasn't lost everything yet. Luffy of course would still feel gratitude towards Jinbei for helping him save Ace during the war, but their relationship might not have gone deeper than that since Jinbei would never have had to see Luffy at his worst and therefore doesn't play the crucial role that he did in Luffy's emotional recovery. Garp and Sengoku would likely not retire to uphold the Navy's reputation. After all, they just led a failed execution and allowed a criminal to escape their grasp and so the Marines would need to keep face and a strong front and what better way to do so than keeping perhaps the two most famous Marine names in history as their leaders. Sengoku not retiring will mean that there is no vacant fleet admiral position to fill, so Kuzan and Sakazuki don't fight for the position, and the original three admirals remain the same. Also, since there's no need to replace any admiral position, there would be no military draft, meaning that neither Fujitora nor Ryokugu get picked to join the admiral ranks, and Isho and Aramaki not being picked as admirals will further impact the story in a much bigger way, as we'll see later. But for now, let's go back to Ace. With his increased bounty, and with the entire world knowing that he's the son of the late Pirate King, Ace's life would be in a lot of danger even for a pirate, and Ace will turn from the hunter to the hunted. Ace being alive will almost definitely mean that he will join what's left of the Whitebeard Pirates to participate in the payback war against the Blackbeard Pirates. However, even with Ace's help, the outcome would still be the same, with the Blackbeard Pirates victorious since it was mentioned that the Whitebeard Pirates suffered an overwhelming defeat, and I don't see how one person could make an impact substantial enough to change the original outcome, even if that person is Ace. However, if other commanders such as Marco and Izzo were able to come out of that battle alive, I think Ace also has a high chance of survival, as well as the fact that his crew members would have likely ensured his safety so as not to waste Whitebeard's sacrifice of giving Ace a second chance at life. But following the result of not only losing his father, but also the payback war, Ace would realize his limited strength and 
and would likely train during the time skip, similar to Luffy. Perhaps he trains with Rayleigh alongside Luffy, with the Dark King now aware that Ace is Roger's son. Or perhaps Ace even trains with Shanks, who saw Roger as a father figure. Consequently, there is one course of action that Ace could take that would make him involved in the big events that happened in the main storyline, and that is to visit the islands that were once under Whitebeard's protection. Ace, in honor of his adoptive father, would likely visit those islands to ensure the well-being of its citizens. With this new mission in mind, Ace would have likely been a part of the Fishman Island arc, helping Luffy and the Straw Hats save the island from the new Fishman pirates. Ace being there would likely result in the difficulty of that battle being a lot easier than it already was for Luffy and his crew. There's even a possibility that Luffy wouldn't have had to lose as much blood as he did, and therefore wouldn't need Jinbei to give him some of his blood. And if you remember, it was during this symbolic scene that Luffy asked Jinbei to join his crew. However, even if everything plays out the same as per the original story, with Luffy needing a blood transfusion from Jinbei, a surviving will still reduce the likelihood of Jinbei joining the Straw Hats. Because Ace, who already has a relationship with Jinbei, could also seek to form his own pirate crew now that the Whitebeard pirates have gone their separate ways. And as a former formidable enemy turned ally, both of whom have strong ties to the late Whitebeard, Ace would likely ask Jinbei to join his crew, offering him the position of first mate. Jinbei would like this idea because it means protecting the islands that Whitebeard once did. But since Jinbei is still a part of the Big Mom pirates at this point in order to protect Fishman Island, Jinbei would postpone joining Ace until he officially leaves Big Mom's crew. The Straw Hats and Ace would part ways after the events of Fishman Island, with Luffy and his crew continuing their adventures, and Ace moving on to another island once protected by Whitebeard. At Punk Hazard, the next major change we'd witness is the consequence of there being no changes to the Admiral ranks. With Aokiji still one of the Admirals, this would mean he would not have been wandering around Punk Hazard as he was when Doflamingo attacked Smoker, meaning Doflamingo would have killed Smoker and likely the rest of the G5 unit. There's also a consideration of what would have happened if that 10-day battle between Aokiji and Akainu never occurred, therefore never changing the geography of Punk Hazard and all the different changes that would result out of that. A surviving will also have a great impact on how the events of Dress Rosa would have played out. With no Meromero no Mi as the prize for winning at the Coliseum, both Luffy and Sabo wouldn't enter the competition and therefore would not be reunited here. Meaning Sabo also doesn't end up getting the Meta Meta no Mi, nor being known as the Flame Emperor later on. But Ptolemeo would also not be in the tournament since the only reason he joined was to win the Meta Meta no Mi to give it to Luffy, therefore missing out on meeting his idol. Burgers, who is a part of the Blackbeard Pirates, seeking strong devil fruits would also likely not be in the battle, and this means that Burgers doesn't sneak onto a revolutionary ship to end up at Baltigo, so the revolutionary army doesn't get attacked by the Blackbeard Pirates, meaning they will more than likely continue using Baltigo as their base. This also means that Luffy will not enter as Lucy and meet future allies pivotal to taking down the Don Quixote family that will later on form the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. However, even if Luffy doesn't personally meet them, there is still a high chance that these warriors who entered the arena and later turned into prisoners and toys would help their alliance because after all, it was Usopp's godly action that turned them back into humans, and their gratitude towards Usopp was one of the main reasons they joined the fight. The revolutionary army would still go to Dressrosa as part of their mission to investigate the Don Quixote pirate's black market dealings, so there's a possibility that Sabo would reunite with Luffy after discovering his presence at Dressrosa once Doflamingo broadcasts Luffy and his allies' bounties. After all, Ace's survival wouldn't greatly change the impact on his other brother Sabo compared to the original storyline. Even without Ace's death, the events of the Marineford War would have been reported worldwide, with Ace and Luffy's names being on the headlines, possibly in connection with Admiral Akainu's real name Sakazuki as well. Sakazuki being the word for a ceremonial exchange of sake cups in which people form a family bond, which is part of what jolted Sabo's memory. So following the Marineford War, Sabo would have regained his memory, undergone his rediscovery of who he is as a person, the only change being his desire to now reunite with both Luffy and Ace. And so Dressrosa will present the perfect opportunity for him to reunite with at least Luffy and even work together in fighting Doflamingo, not only to help his brother, but also to take down the birdcage that imprisoned the citizens of Dressrosa, as 
well as helping Robin, who's a friend to the Revolutionary Army, and was also given a bounty, therefore giving Sabo and his group another personal reason to help the Alliance. But him having not been a part of the tournament means that he plays a more covert role, and will more than likely not receive a bounty himself. And here's where the absence of the two new admirals has another major impact, because it was Fujitora's ideals and dislike towards the Seven Warlords that meant he didn't help out Doflamingo more than he did. He also took his sweet ass time before taking any real action, hanging out at bars and watching the fights at the Colosseum, before heading to Greenbit, where it was then he found out that Doflamingo did not actually step down as a warlord. But if Fujitora is not at Dressrosa, the Marines would still send an admiral to the island upon hearing of Luffy and Law's alliance and that Doflamingo has left the Seven Warlords. And depending on who they send, the story could go very differently. For example, if Aokiji is sent, then the events would likely play out similar to as it did in the story. First, he would likely have a grudge against Doflamingo for killing his colleague and friend Smoker at Punk Hazard, if he somehow found out. But even if he isn't aware, the fact that Doflamingo is keeping an entire country hostage would mean that he's reluctant to assist the warlord against Luffy and the Law Alliance. If it was Kizaru, he would probably carry out his role as an admiral lazily but dutifully, and just get the job done. Whereas if it was Sakazuki, he would have blasted everyone upon arrival. No wasting time like Fujitora, he would arrive much earlier at Greenbit, too early to hear the news that Doflamingo leaving the Warlords was fake, and so would have gone after Doflamingo who, for all intents and purposes, was supposedly no longer a Warlord at this stage. And if he had also found out what was happening to Dressrosa's citizens, he would have swiftly carried out absolute justice, and then promptly go after Luffy and Law and their respective crews, and who knows what that would result in. At Hokkaik Island, I think the events would play out the same, except for the iconic moment when Jinbei swears loyalty to Luffy. Because Jinbei will still help the Straw Hats escape and still declare his intentions to leave Big Mom's crew, but this time to join Ace. Whereas the events of Wano would have some major changes had Ace survived. For one, Luffy would have probably happily revealed his relationship with Ace to Tama, resulting in a special bond early on. But more significantly, Ace's new mission of helping islands formerly protected by Whitebeard means that he would likely also visit his late captain's hometown Sphinx Island and keep in touch with Marco. And given how Marco decided to make a pit stop to bring Izo along after hearing from Nekomamushi, he would have also likely invited Ace. And Ace definitely wouldn't pass up the reunion of helping his allies, taking down Kaido, which is a promise he made to Yamato, and also help free Wano, which he promised to Tama, with the added benefit of reuniting with his younger brother. Meaning that when we see Marco and Izo's arrival at Onigashima, Ace is there too, and so is his new first mate, Jinbei. And Ace would have definitely been a big help during the raid. Had he been involved, the fight would have been much different. First of all, if he arrived at Wano with Marco, then there's a big chance that they would fight Big Mom together, or even take care of Kaido's top officers, King and Queen as well, instead of Marco trying to hold them off 2-1 to one until Zoro and Sanji take the stage. Having his own personal score to settle against Kaido, Ace would have also likely been at the rooftop to help Luffy and the Supernovas fight the Yonko. He would have been a big help especially when Luffy went down and Yamato had to deal with Kaido one on one. Ace would have been able to assist the alliance by some time until Luffy gets back up and might have even awakened his own devil fruit during the battle against Kaido if he hadn't done so already. However, I think Luffy's gear fifth form would still need to be what's needed to defeat Kaido. After the war, Ace would celebrate alongside everyone else, allowing us some amazing interactions. Add him to the bathhouse scene with the men and having reunited with Yamato and Tama during the war, sometime during or after the party, we would also likely see two very important conversations. With Tama, Ace will reaffirm his promise that he will take her along on his crew once she is older and an official Kunoichi. Ace would ask Yamato to travel the seas with him and with no Ryokugu there to attack Wano, Yamato wouldn't have been worried about leaving, making it easier to decide to travel and join Ace's new pirate crew. And so now, with the addition of another powerhouse in Yamato, Ace would go on to continue collecting strong combatants who share his views and ideals. Having read of Sabo's exploits at the Reverie, and with confirmation from Luffy firsthand of Sabo's survival, Ace would be concerned, but also look forward to the day that he will also be reunited with his long-lost brother. Now leading his own crew, the former space 
Blade Pirates rebanded, as well as any remnants of the Whitebeard Pirates who decide to join him, and his notoriety only continuing to increase as he continues to be involved in these major storylines, Ace has enough influence to be considered a Yonko, fulfilling the same role that Whitebeard once held, not holding any intention of going after the One Piece, but a flame emperor, protecting islands and citizens unable to do so themselves, while also ensuring the utmost safety of his family. With events concerning Sabo and the revolutionary army coming to the fore, as well as Blackbeard's inevitable clash with Luffy to come, Ace will continue to play a major role in the story, being involved in that final battle that we're about to witness because he certainly has his own reasons to join the fray, a score yet to be settled with Blackbeard, and another exciting reunion with his brothers. If only had Ace survived the war at Marineford. But did you know that Echiro Oda already showed us Ace and Sabo's reunion? Oda released his own version of how Ace would have survived at Marineford, and his own what-if scenario titled Special Episode Loof is a short three-chapter storyline that showed what would happen if Sabo rescued Luffy and Ace at Marineford. But what about you? Do you have your own scenarios? What did you think of this video? And do you see any other ways that the events would have played out had Ace survived the Marineford War? Let me know by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for listening to another one of my rambling thoughts. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.